Today I'm going to walk us through our document understanding framework. The first thing I'm going to do is show us the document that we're going to be working with today. So this is a, a redacted invoice that we've received. It's got all of the normal things you'd expect on the invoice, invoice number, invoice date, maybe uh, some special things, contract numbers, order numbers, all of this uh, information on the page here. We've got a nice table on the first page and a, another table on the second page here. So what we're going to do is use our document understanding framework to extract all of the information we can from this document. So as of uh, February 2019, we have about three different techniques that we're going to use to do our document understanding. These are going to be uh, regular expression based, position based, and machine learning based. So what I'm going to do first is just walk us through the whole uh, setup from the beginning here. So the first thing we need to do after we've received our document is create what's called a taxonomy. I'll open up the taxonomy manager here. And this is where we're actually going to define all of the fields that we want to extract. So we give it a group and a category and then the document type. This is going to be used for classification later. And then we go and define those fields. So as we saw, there's an invoice number, invoice date, all these different fields. We can select the, uh, the type here. So we've got date for the date and the rest. Uh, some of them are numbers. Some of them will have text. And then here, this, uh, this labor we saw was a table. So these are all the different columns within that table. Go ahead and save that. The next step is to actually load it into our workflow. So here we're just going to use a load taxonomy activity and output the taxonomy as a variable. The next thing we have to do is actually digitize our document to be used in the framework. So we do this by dropping a digitized document activity scope in our workflow and then choosing our OCR engine of choice. So here I'm going to use OmniPage. After we do the digitization, we're ready to do the classification. So here we're going to drop a classified document scope, give it the path to the document uh, and all of the other information that we received from the digitization. And we're going to use uh, one of our classifiers. Right now, a simple one we have is a, the keyword based classifier, where we can actually just go ahead and define keywords that will classify a document. What we can do here is we can either define a uh, path to the data or the data itself. It needs to be in a JSON format and actually has a wizard to help configure that. So all I've done is define the path here, classifier.json, and I'll hit the manage learning button. And from here, I can actually define the keyword or set of keywords that I want to look for. So for this really simple demo, all we're going to do, we only have one document type. So I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, invoice here. On our document, again, we see the word invoice appear uh, several times. So we're going to say if we find invoice, we're going to uh, set the classification here to actually um, match our invoice example that we defined in our taxonomy. We'll output the classification result to use in our data extraction scope. So here's the data extraction scope. This is a place we're actually going to parse out the values. So these are the different extractors that we're going to use today. As you can see in this comment here, you can actually put in uh, multiple extractors and UiPath will use them in a priority order based from left to right. This means that if we wanted to use um, three extractors here for only one value, we can try the first one if that works we don't even have to move on to the second and third. This could be useful if we're using a paid extraction service where you know every page counts, every extraction costs a certain dollar amount. So we can say if we can get a value with the regular expression, that's good enough and we won't actually even use the next extractors. So how do we actually go ahead and configure the um, extractors here? Let's take a look. So the first one we're going to look at is the regular expressions. I'm going to hit configure expression here and open up our uh, regular expression extractor wizard. For this, I'm just going to, I'm going to use regular expressions to pull out only two values. I'm going to pull out the contract number and account number. 
Now, if you're familiar with regular expressions, uh, this, this will look familiar to you. But essentially, we're defining a capture group here based on a pattern that we find in the document. So we know that once we digitize this document, uh, the contract number is actually in between contract number and the bill. So if we look here, we can see contract number, and then this will be the actual value we want, and it's actually between contract number and bill. So once we do the OCR extraction into text, uh, we can look at that in a notepad or some sort of text editor, and we can figure out this regular expression to pull the value out here. So we did the same kind of thing for account number, and we'll go ahead and save that. And then we will move on to the uh, position-based extractor. So we'll go ahead and hit Manage Template. For the position-based extractor, we're going to go ahead and create a template that represents the fixed form that we are extracting from. So it pulls up the this uh, so this message here explains how you can actually go ahead and configure it, but I'm going to go ahead and walk us through it instead. The first thing we need to do is actually uh, do page matching info. So if we have more than one page, we know uh, the the extractor knows what page we're looking at. So all you have to do is define at five or more labels to establish a match for this page. So for the first page here, I selected these uh, five words over here. And for the second page here, I actually used the column headers. You can actually just come ahead and uh, click these or control click to hit multiple ones in the uh, editor on the right side here. Now to actually define the fields that we want to use the position based extractor for, we have to map what we created in the taxonomy to the position on the document. So I've actually gone ahead and defined these already. What I'm going to do is go ahead and remove this one and then do it over so we can see. So here, this invoice number is now missing. What we can do is we come into the document over here and we enter the selection mode. Once we've entered the selection mode, we can go ahead and actually draw a box around the area that we want to extract from. So invoice number, here's our invoice number. I'll draw that box and I must select custom area. Once I select custom area, I can go ahead and mark this value, uh, mark this custom selection for the uh, taxonomy value And we can see if I click on the other um, values here, we see that they have their corresponding fields selected as well. At this current time, uh, when I created this demo, the position base extractor was limited in the fact that it could not actually do uh, tables. But as of the uh, demo day today, Day, actually on the 19th I've heard that that is a soon coming feature so anyways I just went ahead and defined these all as individual fields and then what we'll see next actually in the machine learning based extractor is what we actually use to grab the second table or the yes yeah, so the second table from the second page here so onto the machine learning extractor you do have to define an API key and an endpoint uh, these will be located in your orchestrator instance and then we'll go into the actual configure extractor uh, wizard here. If you've gone ahead and defined your endpoint for the machine learning extractor, uh, like so, you will actually now receive a dropdown of all the available fields that you can grab or that you can query the model for. Okay, and so we said that we are going to use the machine learning for the uh, labor table on the second page. So here we go, we see that we have only selected the three columns that we actually uh, can see in this second table here. And we're going to use um, the values that are in the model that pulled out the correct values or the corresponding values from this document. So here we see we're using description, unit price, and line amount. Well, these might not necessarily uh, be you know, what you had in mind. Um, what I did was I really just tried all of the different uh, possible options here and saw which ones actually returned the results that we were looking for. 
And these are the three that I uh, found in the pre-built model that, that worked. So this is how you configure um, the actual extractors. You just check the extractor for the value that you want to use. And if you wanted to establish a confidence value, you could do that as well. Go ahead and hit save. And just for uh, completion, the rest that we're going to do is present all these results in the validation station uh, and simply uh, export those and write them to an Excel file. So let's go ahead and run our workflow here. So here we see the validation station. We see our document type, the classification that was done from our keyword uh, classifier here. We're able to see all of the different values that we pull, pulled out with the different extractors. And we see on the right side that their values are so highlighted on the document itself. So we are able to grab all of these uh, values here accurately. We see they have uh, different corresponding confidence values as well. And then we can take a look at the labor uh, table at the bottom. So this was what was done with the machine learning extractor. And we see that it was able to actually pull out all of the values uh, that we can see, right? The non-redacted values here. And at the end here, we should be left with an Excel sheet that has all of that same data. We can see our uh, first two rows here, all of the, the first page amounts, and then we've got the, um, the table from the second page here, the labor table. And that is the Document Understanding Framework in a nutshell. Thank you.